gene editing a Michael Crichton-like plot unfolding at the lab, or a procedure that'll become a common tool for fighting disease. The National Academy of Sciences is hosting a historical summit on gene editing, and this is a big deal because anytime scientists decide to get together, don their capes, and argue their side, it means that the technology in question is a game changer, moving from the what if stage to what now. To get a sense of what all the hullabaloo is about, let's look at what gene editing actually is. The formal name for the procedure is CRISPR, Clusters of Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. It was co-developed by Dr. Jennifer Digna, a geneticist at the University of California, Berkeley, who harnessed the power of a protein called Cas9. This protein is able to seek out cut and eventually degrade viral DNA. This allows for Dudna and her colleagues to delete cells in DNA or insert specific ones with unprecedented precision. So if you think of a genetic code like a Word document and diseases like typos in that Word document, the CRISPR method acts as a kind of spell check finding and replacing errors. This is revolutionary. Gene mutations that cause disease can be isolated and clipped out of the genetic code, effectively wiping out cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, HIV, and cancer. But things get dicey when you consider that same technology could be used for embryo editing permanently changing genes of an embryo to create the hypothetical designer baby. In other words, the changes made to the embryo could go well beyond its health and extend to the realm of cutting and pasting genetic code to create the perfect baby. So far, CRISPR has been used in plants to create traits as well as mice and monkeys. And according to Dutna, scientists in Philadelphia use CRISPR to remove the DNA of integrated HIV virus from infected cells. The big deal though was in April 2015 when Chinese scientists were able to change human genes and non-viable embryos, which underscores the fact that not all countries are moving at the same pace when considering the implications of this technology. In fact, Dr. Dudna has called for a moratorium on CRISPR, gathering the scientists for a little global chat on ethics before proceeding any further. But genome editing is hardly new. Scientists have been tinkering with it since the 1970s and grappling with the ethics surrounding it. Other techniques like three-person IVF have been around for decades and are only beginning to be approved for application in humans. So science is pretty conservative when it comes to permanently altering the human genetic code. And this summit is a signal that ethics are the main priority before moving forward. So no worries about Monsanto patenting our genes quite yet. While you're out and about this week, make sure to drop in daily at now.howstuffworks.com. And to get the good stuff delivered to your doorstep, just subscribe.